right, today we are back again with the Maxi EcoGen and we're going to take apart, well, I'm going to take off all of that that's not the Stirling engine and, well, I might talk a little bit about uh, things while we take stuff apart just now <sighs> right, so we don't need any of this gas burning but I'm not going to throw it out, I'll put it in a box and if anybody with a Maxi EcoGen wants it then I suppose uh, hello that's uh, they're, they're in there. Okay, let's switch the sockets then. What size are you? Bigger than bigger than that. Uh, that one. That seems re re reasonable. It's what's in between. What's bigger than uh, seven and smaller than eight? Anyone? Anyone? So I emailed Microgen and asked questions such as: Is there anything I need to be aware of when? trying to power the Stirling engine from a heat source and I've had no heard nothing back which uh, I'm not going to keep screws uh, I have emailed them previously when we were doing the self-powered diesel heater project I emailed them to try and buy one of them which is when they were replied but they did not reply this time to my you know what, I'm just going to put them in there. They did not reply to me email, so I'm no further forward on the powering issues. Because I think we're going to run into a problem. The problem being the control side of uh, running the Stirling engine. I don't think it's as easy as I think it's going to be with the simply give it heat, it starts moving and then it outputs a voltage. I think that's kind of what happens but there was someone shared a video, I wish I had two batteries, can't believe I don't know there's one uh, someone shared a video of somebody else with the same Stirling engine running and they had it like powered from the mains to start with, to start the thing moving and then after that it ran by itself so I don't know if that's a thing we're gonna have to, there's no room to get this in there, uh, if that's a thing or if one of you clever viewers is going to have to design some sort of control mechanism that lets the heater start and start and run and keep running without it stopping because I imagine you can probably stop it quite easily with an overload basically an MPPT controller for a Stirling engine I think Microgen do sell the controller but they didn't even reply that much to tell me like hey here's a thing you can buy and we'll sell you one we did not, did not even get as much as an email for that. Uh, so that's the gas valve in there and mixes the air and gas in there and then blows it in there, which is the burn chamber for the gas boiler, or rather heat exchanger. What else is coming off that bit's broken? So let's do that screw. Okay, anything that falls off is, is on its own. Right, and that's the ig igniter. Igniter. Ugh. It's rather warm in here. I might actually have to take a hoodie off soon. Uh, we'll worry about that later. They look like 12s. Are they 12s? 10s? They are 10s. Never mind. Just ignore me. But yeah, what was I saying? Um, yeah, control side. The hardest bit is going to be the control side of the Stirling engine. Applying heat. So we've got three possible uh, outputs for heating the hot bit. We can use straight hot air out of the diesel air, hot air out the hot air outlet, straight over the Stirling engine and then out to heat your space to see if that's enough heat. We've got the waste heat from the exhaust to see if that is enough heat. And if not, we'll have to build something that basically takes the end off the diesel heater, much like have you attached them? No, it's okay. Here's my example. We take the diesel heater, such as this, which is the open burn chamber end. You see, that's the open burn chamber. And then we'd have to build something on the end of this. So your Stirling engine will be here. Hot air straight out over the Stirling engine and then on and in and round or whatever heat exchange you build after that. But basically just using this as the hot, hot side. And because that's proper hot, you know, burning gases, that should be hot enough, I think, to power a Stirling engine and if not we'll have learned something along the way and if you've learned something it's not a waste right so I'm gonna rip off the rest of this and then we'll 
No, I'm going to take that connector off there. I'll bring you back once I've got some way further in here. Yeah. Nah, I'm taking my hoodie off. I'm too hot. I'm taking it off. And yes, before anyone says, I know these are not the correct tools for the job, but the correct tools for the job are not here. So, so here we are. We're doing it this way. Right, so I'm not time lapsing this. I'm, I'll bring you back once I'm ready and further in. Right, well, this feels like a good place to come back and bring you in. Uh, right, okay, here we go. Come in, come this way. Come out of the tripod. Oh, there we go. Right, so I've got all of the gas burner bit off the top, all the gas valves out the sides, and most of the wiring removed. Now, this bit here is, well, we're gonna have to modify this for what we want. This is the hot end. This is where your gas would have come in this hole and there's igniters on the inside and it would have burned in here and then left via the top and gone back into the uh, heat exchanger up top. But I have removed all of the bolts and it lets you into what is that is the hot side heat sink. And I'm gonna put this on the floor next to all of the other parts. We'll need that bit, none of the other stuff we need. Although, I might keep the blown more. Right, as I say, this is the heat sink of the hot side. And all of this, this bit moves with the whole body of the, if you can see that, it goes up and down and moves independently of the frame. So we kind of need to keep that bit. These bits are just the uh, coolant pipe connections, or they were, I've just disconnected them so now. Basically they just go in one side and out the other in a, to cool the cool side. And as far as I can tell, the only wires that come out of the Stirling engine are these two here. There's, well, no, there's these two, and then there's like other sensor wires. This block here of uh, blues and reds, there's like the uh, thermocouples and thermistors attached to the body. These bits are just for the gas igniter bits, and there's a couple of thermocouples there for that as well. And then those two wires, one of which, the positive, I presume, it then goes up to this 40, 44 uh, megafarad capacitor up here and then back down and into the electronics down here somewhere. But none of those electronics have to help us because it's going to be looking for things like the gas boiler being on, water pressure, all lots of other variables, whereas what we want is just a hot side a hot side, a cold side, this to start moving and giving us some sort of AC output over here. Which is what we're going to have to test next. And uh, I need to well, obviously build some sort of contraption to mount the diesel heater on. I mean, for the time being, I could just blast at it. I could just build a back plate here. Uh, we just, we need, we, ju we just need to see some sort of voltage output or some way to start this. Better yet, if anyone knows or has any documentation, of anything, literally anything, please leave a link down below or email me or leave a message to email me and I'll send you my email address. But if you go to my website, my email address is there as well. You can contact me and then we can start. Well, it would have been nice if Microgen had uh, email me back. Yeah, hell, Microgen, if if you even happen to see this video and you'd like to sell me a control board that I can wire this into, I haven't decided well. Either mains, because I, I, if you look at the, the e Microgen website, they've got solutions for like grid tied, off grid, and battery solutions. So we're probably going for like a, a battery, battery and inverter, and heat. I don't know, I need, I need help. I always need help, but I need more help because this is quite interesting. I'd like to get it working, but I have a feeling there's a lot more electronic side to get the Stirling engine moving and running and keeping going than just applying heat and cold and it starts out putting voltage. But I'll be um, pleasantly surprised if it's that easy. I don't think it is. And again, if anyone needs anything from the backseat boiler side, just leave a message below and I'll uh, see if I can send you something or if we can come to some sort of deal because as I said, this was expensive and it's expensive just to get that bit. But that bit's expensive 
And hell, if this all goes wrong, we'll just sell this bit anyway. But I'd rather do the experiments and the learning because it's interesting. I enjoy it. I hope you're enjoying watching it. Uh, that'll do us for today. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.